everyone. Thank you, Nancy. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us this evening. Um, so I think that if you are logged on and you can see this video, you are probably prepared to start painting. So I'm just going to run through things really fast um, as far as what you need as far as supplies and paint and all those things, and then we'll get started. All right, so I've already got my, my paint palette set up. So we're going to be using the primary colors, yellow, uh, red, blue, and black and white. Uh, you will probably need more white than any other color this evening because we're, we are going to be painting the sunset and there's a lot of white in there. So if you're wondering, well, which color will I need the most of, it'll probably be white um, and then probably the yellow. Okay, so that's what your palette should look like. You can put it on a plate or a, um, a piece of plastic or foil or any surface that you don't mind getting paint all over and then you can just dispose of it when you're finished. Okay, so there's the paint. Um, you should have a jug of water so that you can rinse out your brushes and um, you can, of course, you're at home so you can always just go and clean out your brushes when you need to and change out your water. Um, so I'm going to be using three brushes this evening. Um, I've got a large brush here that I'm going to use. Your large brush might look a little bit different, but just whatever, a big brush to cover the surface of your canvas quickly. And then I've got a medium brush and then I've got a small brush. Okay. Um, I'm watching the clouds because it sounds like it might start raining on me, I'm not, but if it does, I can easily move inside. I just love the, um, the weather this evening, so I thought I'd be outside tonight. But again, if I have to immediately go inside and uh, change the um, location, I can do that really quick. But I'll make sure I give you guys an instruction first before if I decide to go inside. All right, so we've got that covered. And now we have, um, what else? Our brushes, like I've gone over the um, large, medium, and small, and then paper towels. So you should have a roll or at least a few paper towels or napkins um, hanging around. Uh, you can also use an old t-shirt or anything like that if you need to, um, you know, if you want to just use something and repurpose it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and give you guys the first step tonight. Uh, we're going to be using acrylic paint. If you don't have paint this evening, if you're using something else, crayons, watercolors, oils, um, the rules will still apply the same. You just want to make sure that you're using a good variety of whatever medium you have. All right. So I'm going to give you guys a step. And I, th I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my umbrella. Um, and then maybe we can let this rain pass by. But I want you to grab your biggest brush. And you're going to mix yellow and white paint. So yellow and white. So watch how I do this. And a lot of water. OK. So you want to water down this paint quite a bit. So I'm just adding like a teaspoon of water to my paint and I'm just going to go ahead and go um, side to side and just cover the entire uh, canvas with water. Now here's, a, here's an interesting thing. You can either do a vertical or a horizontal, okay? Um, either one is fine. Just maybe depending on where you're going to put this, you decide how you'd like to um, create your composition. So you're going to use a, a nice medium yellow like this here. So I'm going to hold this up so you can see what color it is here. And then you're just going to paint the entire thing um, with yellow paint. All right. And you're just going to use some water. If you use water, that paint is going to, to really go a lot farther. So don't be afraid of the water, especially for this beginning step. Um, you will conserve a lot of paint if you add that water to it. All right, so this might take you just a couple minutes. So go ahead and get your surface covered. Also, if you're painting on a stretch canvas like this, you want to go ahead and um, paint the edges as well. So whatever color you're using, you want to go ahead and, and do all four sides. Just carry it right over so that you have a um, automatically framed uh, canvas. All right.
Okay. All right. So you guys just continue painting your um, entire surface here and continue to add water. Don't forget, the water is super important. Don't go too dark. We really want a nice uh, mild yellow. So one thing I do like to do um, if you are having a hard time painting the top or the bottom of your canvas, you can absolutely just turn it upside down or sideways or even hold on to it if needed. If you're not using an easel like I am, this is um, just a really standard easel I got at Michael's, um, you can paint, uh, paint flat on the surface. You can also just prop it up on something, just have it lean up against something. Um, I typically, when I'm painting, I don't always use an easel. Sometimes I just lay my canvas flat and that works just fine. You certainly look more fancy when you have an easel, but it is not a deal breaker at all. All right, so um, I hope you all know what we're painting tonight, <laughs> but if you uh, don't have the photograph, this is it right here. Um, so I just have it saved on my phone. Um, I did not print it out because I was having printer problems, but if you want to take a picture of this screen, uh, I'm gonna hold it up here just for a second, uh, about 30 seconds, if you want to take a photo of it so that you have it on your phone and then you can easily just um, reference your phone as needed. But take a look at it. See how much white is going down the center of the um, composition there with a lot of reflection and it's, it's very, very, um, it feels very sunset, tropical, uh, maybe 
you know, lake scene, but it's got a lot of color in the water and in the sky that are repeating. Okay, so just keep that in mind. All right, excellent. So as needed, refer back to your photo. Um, and then also just know that your painting might not look exactly like mine. It may not look exactly like the, uh, the original and that's okay. You know, this is painting, so it's very personal. It's like your signature, your fingerprint. Uh, everybody is unique. Um, we can all strive to do the same thing and it's always going to have a little bit of variation in it and just embrace that. That's okay. All right. Okay, so now I've got a nice base of yellow. So um, the next color that I want to use is um, I'm going to start creating a nice orange color that's going to um, really start defining the water. So I'm not going to clean my brush. I'm just going to um, dip it into water and I'm going to add a touch of red to my yellow. So this is how I do it. it you can use a separate palette or any, you know, any way that works for you. Some people like to have a couple of palettes, um, but I'm just pulling in a little bit of red into this yellow and white. And you don't really want it to be too peachy. You want it to be a little bit more yellow. So if you add too much white to it, it's going to look peach, but more yellow and red, you're going to get this nice orange tone. And I'm still using my large brush and water. I, this is a nice big mop brush, so I can hold a lot of water in there, and that's what I want. All right, so now I've got a good amount of water and then I'm going to start defining what is sky and what is um, water. Okay, so I'm just going to create a center line here. Now I've built my, my horizon line and what I'm doing is notice I'm just going side to side with my brush here because I don't, I don't want to go up and down. I want this to look like water um, that's smooth and uh, horizontal. So you keep your brush strokes that, that way. So I'm kind of painting over a lot of the yellow, not all of it, but definitely getting a good amount covered on either side. And I'm taking my brush and I'm pressing from the edge and pulling inward. So I'm pulling it and then I'm dragging it and kind of lifting it off so I get this really nice feathered effect. Again, water is the key. And I'm gonna do this all the way down. And as we paint, everyone, if you need to take a break, please do. Um, if you need to stretch your legs, I will also have hard breaks um, during the class so that you can stretch, um, get yourself a drink or change out your water. Um, it's important to take small breaks when you're painting just to reset yourself a little bit. Super important. And notice I'm not creating a very hard line. It's just kind of feathered. That's good. I also love what happens when you don't over mix the colors that you get these really beautiful blends um, that happen when you don't over mix. If I were to just keep going and over the same spot over and over again, um, you'll just end up with the same exact color. But when you have a little bit of a surprise, like look at that, I've got a little too much red in there, but I like it. But see how that just adds to the um, the beauty of your water. So that's a good thing. And then again, make sure you get your edges. I'm just going to pick up my canvas and paint my edges. Also can turn it sideways to get that bottom lip painted as well. up and down and then I'm just going to put this right side up again. If you have any questions, you can unmute yourself and ask. I'm sure someone else is wondering the same thing, so that's okay to do. Or you can also uh, type in your question in the chat option on Zoom, so that's an option for you as well. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, so now that we've gotten this nice orange base in our water, I want to add a little bit more of the orange in the water, but I want it to be a little bit more of a bright, real orange. So what I'm gonna do is, still using my big brush, keep using this big brush until um, I tell you to switch. So this is going to be our main brush here. So now I want a very, kind of bright, not quite Denver Bronco orange, but much deeper, like a, an actual fruit orange. All right, so I'm just mixing the yellow and red, and I'm still using um, a little white. There's a little bit of white in there and water. Every once in a while, I'll just dip my brush into a little bit more water. And then um, what I wanna do here is be very careful. You really want these strokes to be very um, fluid and water-like. So see how I'm just grazing to the left side of the canvas and I'm just creating a very smooth orange layer um, on the left here, like this. Don't overblend it, just nice and soft. Grab more water if you feel like it needs it. Don't get so much water that your painting is crying. That's sad, we don't want that. But you do want just enough to let that paint glide much easier. So we're gonna do this on both sides, the um, left and the right side. So I'm gonna come over on this side, do the same thing. You really don't want to see hard stops. So if I were to take my brush, I'll show you what I mean. If you go like this and you hold it and then you pull and then lift it off. So now you have these hard lines on either side. You really don't want that. You want it to be very smooth. So you do that by sweeping it on there like this. Oh, look at that. That's a lot of red. So what happens if you make a happy little accident like I just did. Um, so here I'll just kind of pull off some of this paint because I picked up way too much red there. Um, maybe I'll pick up a little bit of yellow and white and then I'm just gonna go over that and blend it. Move, it. move that paint around. When you start moving it, it changes it dramatically. All right. I'm gonna say that's that's pretty good, right about there. If you see any little spots that you wanna smooth out, go ahead and do that. See how quickly I paint? That really helps to get that covered um, fast and nice and feathered. I land the brush quickly and I feather it out quickly. Right about there. Before you rinse your brush or do anything with it, you have some extra paint on your brush, um, I'm gonna go ahead and add a few strokes to my sky. I know I'm moving kind of quickly, but I just don't wanna waste this brush of paint. So I'm just gonna come up here and I'm just gonna make some really fast clouds. Try not to do anything here because this is where our light source is gonna be. So I'm mostly focusing on the edges here so left and right just a little bit of that deep orange but don't cover up all that yellow that yellow is really, really lovely don't cover that all up you just want it to live on a layer above that 
yellow. So maybe about right there. Okay, I'm just referencing my picture here. Um, so now we've got that orange and um, on top of that yellow. So do you see how there's a little bit of a blue or a bluish green? So if you look here in the sort of the bottom of the sky and then a little bit in the water, there is a little bit of blue in there. Also some greens. It's it's mostly a very warm composition, but there's definitely some cools in there, which gives it a really nice, lovely contrast. So um, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to start mixing a little bit of that blue in, in this um, color family I've got. So um, I've dunked my brush into some water here, and I'm focusing here in this peach color. All right. So... What's going to happen when you start adding blue to this? It's not going to look blue. It's almost going to have like, like a gray tone, um, a grayish blue. So I'm just going to pick up a tiny spot of blue and then I'm going to mix that in there. So see what happens? It's almost like a greenish blue. All right. Um, and what we're going to do is just picking up a little bit of white. See what happens when you start picking up some other colors in there, a little white, a little yellow. You get these beautiful um, sort of muted blues and greens. So I'm going to take my brush here and I'm going to, um, right here, right where the sky meets the water, I'm going to start introducing this. And again, it's the same brush stroke where you just very um, fast and cautiously sort of land your brush and smooth it out. So if you're sitting down, sometimes I find it's easier to stand up and, um, you know, work on your painting standing. Um, for some reason, it just kind of gives you a little bit more control. Sort of like if you're playing softball or kickball or any sport, like if somebody were to throw a ball at you and you're sitting down, you're, you, you'll probably catch it. But if you're standing up, you're just more focused. So sometimes when I'm painting, I will stand up. It's just maybe a a mental um, a mental thing, but sometimes it does help. So if you need to stand up, go for it. Lots of businesses these days are, you know, providing employees with standing desks, kind of the same principle, just you, your mindset shifts when you're sitting and standing. So putting that out there if that works for you. All right, so again, I'm not working so much here in the center. I'm keeping that area, um, free so that I can add white to that once all of this is done. That white is really striking and that's what's going to really pull this look together. So I'm also going to add a little bit of this bluish color to the water. So here I'm just mixing a little more. So I'm pulling some blue. I've got some white. If it gets too bluish, you can add a little bit of yellow, a tiny bit of red. I like that. That's nice. And then, of course, a little bit of water. And then I'm going to just land my brush just like this. I'm keeping that really nice fluid brush stroke going. And see how far away I am from my canvas? I'm painting like this from the side. I am not painting like this because I feel like I have more control if I can get over on the side like this. And then what I like to do, I'll turn this upside down and I'll do the other side because I just have a little more leverage, a little more control if I'm on the side of my canvas here. 
So right about here. And again, it's blue, white, little yellow, little red. And it just turns into this really nice, like a sea foam color. And then um, if you want, you can even add a little streak of this color up high. Oh, that, that has a lot of blue in it, but I like it. Let some of these bright colors shine through. So if you got a little extra blue in there, I like it. I don't want it to be too muted. I want some blue showing through, so I'm going to leave it. Maybe do a little bit of this on this, the other side too. Painting is a good workout. You'll feel it in your arms. Picked up a little extra white in there, but I like it. Just blending things in. You don't want hard lines showing. So if you see something that's got a very sharp defined line, smooth it out. Pick up a little yellow or a little bit of white and some water and really work it in there so that you smooth it out. If you've ever baked a cake, you know you don't want all those lumps in your cake mix when you're blending it, right? You wanna smooth it out. So you wanna do that when you're painting a sky in water. You don't want hard defined uh, lines in there. You wanna smooth those out, but be careful not to get rid of your beautiful colors that you've created here. All right, I'm gonna slow down here. Um, be careful you don't go too crazy. We wanna stop at about this point here and take a, a couple seconds, excuse me, a couple seconds to look at your colors. Make sure you didn't overblend them no hard stops anywhere. Um, you've got like not like a lot of variation, yellows, orange, little blue, little green, little white. That's what I want to see. Move that up close, you can see it. Oh, it started at six thirty. So now that we've gotten our base colors on here, um, what I want to start focusing on next is the sun. So take a look at the sun. See, it's a little circle um, and it's got, it's not a perfect circle. It's got some clouds ripping through it a little bit, but it's very white. And then that streak underneath it. So whenever you have a, a sun, that's reflecting on a body of water. See how aligned it is? It's right underneath it. It's reflecting it perfectly. So just keep that in mind as you're painting this. 
don't move your reflection off to the left or right, then it's not going to look correct. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my medium brush. It looks like this. It's a half an inch square brush that is nice because it has like good control, but yet it'll cover a nice big area immediately. So this is a great brush. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, first wet my brush. Also, if you are finished with your large brush, just drop it into your water jar. You want it to sit in water so that it doesn't dry out. The bristles will start to get hard when that paint dries because it's plastic. So just leave it in the water so that you um, preserve that brush and then you can come back and use it if you need to. Okay, so now I've got my medium square and then I'm just going to pull some white into this brush here and where's my sun gonna go? So here's the water line. You could see that definition there. Um, I feel like a few inches from the top, so not way up here, but just maybe about, it's gonna live right here. Um, then you decide where you're gonna put that and you're just going to paint a small circle there. And so the way I paint a circle is I just start taking my brush and going around and around, from, starting from the inside and moving my way out. And it's not very bright. I might, I'm gonna give it another layer here pretty soon, but I just want to get a nice round shape in there like this. Okay. Um, so go ahead and do that. Just fill it in. Picked up a little more white. Then what you want to do is you're going to just take your um, brush and you're just going to kind of eyeball right underneath this sun and I'm just going to dot on some white like this right down the center all the way down. This is a really big lake. You can't see the beginning or the end of this lake. So I'm just going straight down. That's just going to be my guide. I'll give you all a minute to get this done and then I'll show you what I'm going to do here in just a moment. If you need to see the original again. Okay, then what I'm going to do before this dries, now I'm just going to take my white. I've got more white on my brush, not so much water. It's just a little bit of white paint. If you add too much water, you won't get this nice feather effect. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just following that line and I'm going side to side. And I'm just going to go right down. I do need a little water. You can start to feel that paint pulling against you. Um, it just, it's harder to, to drag. You can start to feel it feels dry. So if you, if you feel that, just grab a, a little water. So you almost want it to be like a cone shape. I'm going to have it taper down thin here. So as you come down to the bottom, you're just going to do a very small funnel and then it's like an upside down pine tree. Here, that's where it's the smallest down here. Like this, and feather it out. See, if you add too much water, it just added too much water there, but that's okay. Try to avoid that. So what happens if you add too much white and now you're losing a lot of your background? The good thing about acrylic paint is that you can
go in reverse and, and fix that, all right? So here I'm, I'm just adding a little bit. I really want this really nice thick stripe here. So I'm going out to the sides. But if you add too much white and you wanna fix this, you can just go back in to your yellows and kind of blues, and then you can kind of fix it like this, see? You wanna to try to get it to blend. So if you overdo it with white, you can go in with some dark colors and fix it. There's a kind of a time restraint on blending though. Once your paint underneath is totally dry, it's not gonna blend with what you put on top. So you wanna paint at a pace that's going to allow for blending. That makes sense and you'll start to know what the paint's going to do so from the time you start even if you're a beginner to the time you finish your painting you really start to understand the way the paint works and what it's going to do it starts to become predictable i'm just touching up where i see i don't like how that hard blend is right there it's 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 not soft enough so i'm just going in and a little bit of yellow and white just softening it this is a difficult painting um <laughs> uh waterscapes and um, skies sometimes are they're so simple that they're tricky in a weird way so give yourself some patience and don't be hard on yourself and uh, painting is just as much the experience of doing it and trying it and learning from it as it is your final product it's the journey not always just the destination so there I added a lot of white, doesn't make sense. Like, where's this light coming from? There's nothing up here. So I'm gonna correct that by adding a little yellow and orange to make that go away. Cause that's way too light. It doesn't make sense for my composition. So there it is, now it's gone. So just to show you how easy it is to fix it. All right, so what we're gonna do now, class, is I wanna take a break. Um, so once you get your white on there, don't add another coat of white to your sun. Let this all dry. We're gonna go back and add some more layers on this, but let's get this base to dry. So um, let's take a 10 minute break. Um, so this is a good time if you you know need to clean out your water if you want to, like mine's pretty dirty, I'm, I'm going to go inside and clean it, um, clean my brushes out. If you need to get a drink or use the restroom or anything like that, text your friends, um, do that, and then we'll get back together, 717. So we'll say 727, um, setting my alarm here for 10 minutes. If you have any questions, uh, let me know. I am going to just get up for a moment to clean my brushes and my workstation and um, let my dog out and uh, I will be back and answer any questions that you might have. But super important to stop painting. Um, otherwise, this is never going to dry. So stop painting. Put your brushes in the water like this. Clean out your brushes if you want to and then we'll be back in 10 minutes.
Are there paintbrushes for me? Are there paintbrushes for me? Yeah. It's okay, I can stand up. Okay, so you can use any of that paint and you can use these brushes. Uh, can and you here's a palette. Alright, so everybody, I just want to check in on you. Hopefully you're doing okay. And if you have you practicing? A, um, Are you practicing? A question? Yeah. Okay. Please let us know. My daughter's out here. She's going to join us. <laughs> She's going to paint her own uh, work of art this evening. If you want to grab another plate from in there, you can, or put foil on top of there. Okay? Yeah. All right, so here's what we're going to do next is we're going to take our uh, medium brush, and we really need to add some very defined... Um, blue lines here. So sorry, I'm just, that was my alarm going off to come back. I'm um, looking at my painting here. So there are some really nice hard blue lines in there. So if you look here on the water lines here, you can see some very deep blue, deep blue, a few up there. We want to add those in so that it looks very fluid like. So I'm just going to take my medium brush. I've cleaned my brush. I'm going to pick up some blue. And I'm going to sweep some very light, not too dark, and not too much paint. I used a very small amount of paint here. So very nice sweep here on this side and then over here. So don't use a lot of paint, super important that you don't because you don't want this to be heavy um, visually. Very small, thin stripes here. So right there. That's as much as I want to do. If you have too much paint on your brush, um, sometimes what I do is I don't go into the water and rinse it. I'll just wipe it off with a paper towel. Just wipe off some of that paint and then you can sort of soften 
that yeah. up. I don't paint. Yeah, we'll go through and grab one. Yeah, well, yeah, put play. Okay, so just softening up these lines. Okay, um, and then I'm going to do a little bit on the top here. So where you want to put them, that's up to you. I just, you know, kind of find an area that needs a little bit of variation, and I will add it in there. Just like that. And oops, that's really dark. I don't know if I want to stay that dark. So if that happens, just pick up a little bit of white or a little yellow, and then it, like, I showed you before, you can really sort of clean up um, areas where you go too dark. See, and that's a little bit too light there. So I'm going to try to correct that by just blending it. Maybe add a little bit of red in there. Kind of hard to predict what these colors are going to do. Um, so it's a bit of just trial and error. Um, which is kind of a fun way to look at your challenge level here, just deciding that you don't know what it's gonna do exactly, but you're just gonna run with it. So there's, I'm pretty happy with this amount of blue. All right. Then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clean off my brush, my medium brush. And then I'm sorry, my dog's barking. Um, I think there's somebody at the front door. I'm just going to pick up more white and I'm just going to go around in a circle again and really highlight that sun more. I want it to be super white. Then I don't want it to be such a round shape, so I'm just going to break that up by just adding a few lines like this, just so that it looks like the cloud cover is just, is just sort of warping that so it's not so perfect. And then more white to really brighten up that water. You need water. Yeah. And I'm just going to pick up kind of lost my cone shape there, but that's okay. I can recreate that. So here where I went a little too far with my white, I'll just go in with some yellow and soften it up. This is a lot of layering, lots and lots of colors overlapping and recreating. But you never change your brush stroke. See, it's just very left to right and sweeping. little bit too white there, but again, I'll just correct it. All right, if anybody wants to show their sky, um, you are welcome to do a show on your screen. I would love to see your progress, if anybody would like to. Oh, very nice. Beautiful. All right. Looks good. All right. Got 
one person who showed their artwork. Does anybody else want to show their artwork? Thank you, uh, Kristen. All right, Jen, McCoy, and Lutzi, thank you. Very nice. Very good. Love it. Good job. Mia, thank you, Mia. Oh, that looks good. Really nice water and land definition. All right. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate you sharing. Um, super important to see what other people are doing so that you can kind of get inspired or have, um, you know, ideas or brought on by being inspired by other artists. So it's important to do that. Also really important to take a look at your artwork from further back. So what I like to do is I'll put my canvas up and then go to the back of the room and look at it from further back uh, because you'll see areas where you're like, oh, that's there's too much yellow or I went way too dark over here. I need to bring that darkness in that, that somewhere else. So I think it's very important to look at your artwork from a little bit further back. All right. So let me just take a look at our original here. Um, starting to get there. We're going to start painting in the uh, mountains. So these are very subtle mountains. If you look at the color, I would call that a very dark navy blue. It is not solid black, I don't think. Um, I don't like to use a lot of solid black in my artwork unless I'm using or I'm going for a specific style. Um, so I try to, to avoid using solid black because it's just so visually heavy. So what I can do here is I can take my medium brush and I'm just going to pick up some black and maybe I'll throw in a little yellow and then maybe a little bit of blue. A lot more blue. I'm kind of going for like a dark smoky navy. I think that's a nice color here. Um, sometimes what I do is I'll just start mixing all of my colors together um, and then adding a little black to it. So then it's kind of an off black. And then again you want to make sure that you add some water to this. And then what you want to do is very carefully um, as careful as, as you can and as straight as you can. You're just going to make a line that's going to define your land from your sea and your sky. So right about here. So I've just basically sliced my canvas almost in half. My water is a little bit um, higher and I have less sky than water. So I've split that up. Then what I'm going to do I'm going to use my small brush. So I've got my medium brush filled with paint, so I'm just going to scrape some of that off. I don't want to waste it. And then I'm going to use my small brush. And then I'm just going to load up my small brush and start spinning it into this mixture. And I'm going to create my mountains. So here's my water line, and then my mountains just random. And this paint's dry, so definitely add a little bit of water to it. You'll notice it just goes much smoother when you add water. Um, and how high do you want your mountains? Maybe you want them really defined. It's up to you. I don't want mine too high. They're sort of foothills for me here. It's like Chatfield Lake or something. And then you want to make sure you go off to the sides. So here where your canvas meets the edge, I'm just continuing that mountain. Right, 
So I'm going to give you all a minute to work on that and make sure that you are, you know, using plenty of water. This is a, a fun little um, optional step. If you have very good control of your brush, um, what you can do is just create like some long brush strokes here. Like maybe these are far away trees or um, maybe they're posts or the tops of sailboats. Or something just kind of break up that hard line however if you don't feel like you have good control of your brush um, you don't have to do this step the last thing I want you to do is make these really awkward thick posts that are like don't make a lot of sense so if you feel confident and you feel like you can just very lightly brush upward like this and just create these little posts, trees maybe. If you wanted to make a couple of them trees, you could. You could just sort of add in a little bit of a triangular shape and then they'll look like little trees. Optional, it is on the original. Um, so if you want to do this, go for it. I think it gives it a little bit more interest. Makes it a little more um, interesting to look at rather than just one big flat mountain um, scape. Okay, so we've got that. Um, I'm going to give you all a couple more minutes. Let's, uh, 745, let's move on to the sailboat um, because that's going to be our main focal point. And the sailboat's cool because you can put your sailboat on the left or right. I'm going to put my sailboat here in this area, sort of like the original where it's not center, it's center left. And that's where I'm going to have my sailboat live. So that's coming up. You will need your small brush and that exact same paint color.
Okay, so the sailboat is probably, if I were to use something to measure with, maybe it's like the size of my palm, okay? It's, it's big enough to draw attention to it, but it's not overwhelmingly huge. It's just a nice little subtle boat. If you want to make your boat a little bit bigger, um, you can. I would recommend starting off small so that if you make a mistake, you can expand it outward and not notice that you made a mistake. But if you go really big, um, then it, you can't go back down. It'll show if you try to paint over it. So let's try to start off small and then we will um, expand it out if needed. So this particular sailboat, it's almost more like a schooner. It's got several sa sails on it. It's bigger than a small sailboat. So um, the easiest way to paint this is definitely use your smallest brush, whatever small brush you have. And then you wanna make sure that you add enough water to your paint to get that paint nice and thin. And it does have some good sharp points on it. So you'll see that there's some very um, fine points and posts and all these other little elements that make a nice sailboat. So here we go. I'm gonna start off with my paint mixture, the same color that we used for the mountains. We're just working in silhouettes here, which is a really nice way to get the point across without adding details, silhouetting all the way. So I'm going to start off with my um, front sail. So that's gonna be a little triangle just like this, nice little sharp point there. Let me hold that up for you a little bit closer. My paint's dry, I'm gonna add a touch of water. Just get that nice and sharp. It's, it's a triangular shape, but it's not perfect triangle. It's got some wind pushing through it, so it's not a harsh triangle. Then, next shape is going to be right next to it, like this, and it's kind of a rectangular panel that's living right next to that one. And then the top most prominent one, that sail is the tallest of the three. And I'm just going to grab a little bit of water to thin that out and fill it in. And fill that in. So what I can do now is I'm just going to add a tall post here, maybe one on the second sail. And then I'm going to connect my posts so that it looks like my boat has just a lot of little technical things working for it. And I am going to add a little bottom to this because I feel like it needs it just to really break up that water down below. So it's not like this on the original, but I really want my, my boat to look like it's separate from this mountain range. So that's, I'm adding just a little bit of that boat right underneath these sails. I feel like that makes it feel more dimensional. All right, so go ahead and work on this. I'm going to hold this up here so you could see it closer if you need a reference.
Okay. So now um, I want to really add more details to the water if you feel like it feels a little flat, right? So we've got our main focal point done. Um, so some things I might add to my water. Um, so I'm just gonna clean off my medium brush. So when you're cleaning a brush after you've used it and it's very dark paint, you really want to make sure that you get that paint off and then wipe off your brush with a paper towel. So I'm doing this and wiping off and I should get most of that paint off and that's going to work just fine for my next color. So looking at the original, there is quite a bit of pure yellow in there. So see the yellow around the sun? and some of that yellow around um, the reflection on the water. Okay, so just going to create some of that really bright yellow light around the, um, the sun here. So I've picked up a little bit of water, a little bit of yellow, and I'm just going to really brighten this up. And You'll notice your painting looks very different in different lights, different times of day. Um, so the since I'm painting outside, this looked vastly different when we first started than it does now because the light is changing outside. Um, but that's like a beautiful thing about paintings. You can put them in a room and they look different day or night um, and it still works. So. I'm just gonna add a little bit of yellow now to the base of my water. So I'm kind of, I'm overlapping some of that white in the water and I'm adding a nice thin layer, very thin layer of yellow. And it really makes the water look so much brighter. But it's a wash. So sometimes in acrylic we'll call something, it's a wash. What does that mean? So that means that you've added a significant amount of water to your paint and it looks almost like a watercolor. So I'm washing yellow over my paint. So it's got almost a transparent look. We're getting there. We've got maybe one more step and then we'll be done. Um, and of course, if you want to continue working on your painting, that's some kind of the nice thing. You're at home and you can keep working on it and adjusting and um, all those, you know, small areas that you want to touch up. Feel free to do that. Um, that's okay to do. Sometimes I'll even look at a painting the next day and say, oh, I really want to add more detail here. Go for it. Um, maybe you want to add more, um, you know, trees or you want to add some more defined clouds or you really want to add more waves. Whatever. This is your painting so you can absolutely just keep building on it beyond what we're teaching you tonight. All right, so one more step here. Um, there is a little bit of white that's sweeping in the water here. So what I've done is I've cleaned off my brush and then I just added a tiny bit of white to the end, very small amount of paint. Um, I can test it out. If I've got too much paint, I would wipe it off with a paper towel. But here I can just very carefully sweep in. See how I keep my hand very steady like a pendulum almost right over my canvas picking up just a little more I'm just gonna stand up here like I said sometimes I stand when I paint get a little bit of this white in here and then here I'm just gonna get a little white in there not too much If 
it starts to look too bright, of course, you can always bring it back down. Water is such a fun, interesting thing to paint because it's not just blue. Water will take on the color of its surroundings, essentially. Cloudy day, the water looks really dark gray. On a bright, sunny day, it looks blue. So it really is a reflection of whatever the sky is doing, which is always a fun reason to paint a a sunset like this because you can do so much with color and mood. Here I'm just touching up my sun a little bit. Definitely don't lose that brightness here of the sun. So if it starts to look a little bit muddy, go back in with pure white, bring that back. This is your focal point. This is the lightest part of your painting. All right, so that is the last step. And I like to sign my artwork. So what I do is I just can use like a small brush or paint marker or whatever. And I just always just put my initials down here at the bottom. And then if you want to, you can put the date on your painting on the back. Don't put the date on the front. Um, it's so distracting to put like a giant date at the bottom. Put it on the back. All we need is your signature here. You don't have to add the date to the front. Put it on the back. And I hope that you love your painting. Um, if you uh, want to know more about Sippin' and Painting Hamden, visit our website. Um, you know, you all visited the website in order to log into this class. So definitely check out the calendar and see what's coming up for uh, the month of July and August. And um, we just want to all, you know, thank you for supporting a small business, a locally owned business. We've been around for a, a pretty long time and hope to be around for um, a long time to come. So we hope to open our doors here soon. We actually will be um, having classes in the studio starting July 1st. So if you want to come in and paint with us, paint with me, um, definitely sign up for a class in, at the studio. Um, you know, we're on, we're on Hamden and I-25, really easy to get to, and we would love to see you there. So definitely check that out. Um, and lastly, if you do want to uh, tip your instructor, me, Vanessa, here is my info, my Venmo address, and my PayPal. So I will leave this up here for you if you want to take a picture of it or um, whatever. I surely appreciate it. Um, and thank you all again.